At minutia, like the incorrect use of a word, or you know, you're not using that word right. Well, in many cases, they miss the uh, point entirely. And there are other factors at play that again, it's the things that that are beyond you if you sort of dismiss things, other points of view, without necessarily doing a sufficient amount of analysis. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're correct, but is that you have to understand why a person thinks the way they think. And it is possible to do that. You need to go into their history, go into the work, that the past work they've done, and you can sort of start seeing this. But if you don't do that, then you're in a, in a situation where, and this is part of the problem, is that analysis doesn't occur right away. And I'll bring up the example of a pastor I was watching last night with my parents, and they thought something interesting. And the pastor basically brought up all of the uh, uh, the work that St. Ian and Aeneas had done, and Aeneas had done, and that that I had been working on as well. Was basically looking at the Gnostic universe and understanding who the Gnostics were, and because they're coming back up again, what happens is that it was understood right from the beginning. This is actually within Dostoevsky. Uh, you're, you're looking at uh, basically uh, the uh, Grand Inquisitor, the chapter of the Grand Inquisitor uh, within Brothers Karamazov, and the, the fundamental point here is is that the, the church never really gives them, never gives up control, but understands that people will fall away and come back again when they need some. And so, the whole point was that the church, the, the church, the, 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 the Roman Catholic Church, which is a Gnostic understanding of Christianity, that's the thing, that's the thing, is that it, the Western Church is a Gnostic pagan thing. It's not that the church is becoming more pagan now, they always have been, in terms of the West. The Eastern churches were never pagan. Even though they had a Gnostic sense, in terms of, just, the, not Gnostic in terms of pagan Gnostic, but in terms of knowledge. They had the knowledge of the Holy Spirit because you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're baptized you, you, in, your, in, your, in your baptism, you put on Christ in the early Christian church. This is why the, the Catholics bless themselves going to the left and then to the right because they're facing the cross. They're not part of the cross, they're not on the cross, they're not with Christ. They're facing Christ, they're the servants. And again, it's that statement, that, 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 that perspective of the prodigal son return to become the servant and ignoring the fact that the father has said this come on in as a son not as a servant so we're welcome back from our condition as a son of god as a, as a child of god and again son is not specifically masculine in this case here uh, they're using the anthropomorphic the anthropomorphic sense 
uh, and talking about man the species so you could hear the son of man the species uh, <laughs> is also is not specifically male but uh, can be either it's just yeah. sort of if you will an evolution or, or a uh, an explanation of things that are rather difficult to describe so the son of God or, or a child of God more appropriately can be end of it so in other words this and this is in this is in the first chapter within the first chapter of the evangelist John st. John it, it, it's it's laid out right there and it's repeated throughout the gospel that this is the case this is what the public and the Pharisees this is uh, the wicked servant this is um, the parable of the kingsman is all throughout the gospel. Yet, a large chunk of the gospel by many seem to be ignored. And so we're, what happens is that we're moving into a period now of not of, of no that this is what this uh, pastor was talking about didn't realize that, that that the whole communist idea the humanist idea is collapsing and we're moving into a new sphere now this is where a lot of the confusion is because the the, the field of gnosis is very is extremely wide and undefined and not everything you're going to be here is going to be good. Because the world of Gnosis contains both the knowledge of good and evil. So this has to be a consideration that, you, you know, that you're also hearing or experiencing evil in the sense of knowledge that you say, okay, I'm, I'm a Gnostic. Well, are you on the left-hand path or are you on the right-hand path? And the Gnostics themselves recognize Christ on the right-hand path. And ironically, you have things like the entertainment industry represented by, represented by Madonna as being part of the right-hand path, a uh, left-hand path, the path towards evil. And this is where you have Baphomet, this is where you have the Antichrist, and, and, and their job, their function, if you will, is to destroy mankind. And we see this, we see the, the level of destruction in the world. We see evil being represented, being told that, 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 that it's good. And this is what's happened to a lot of the kids since 1990. You've had this sort of uh, uh, education system that, will, that has indoctrinated them into believing that everything is fine, that there is a, a, sort of a hedonistic view that as long as it makes you feel good, it is good. And this is again, it, it stands outside the Hegelian dialectic. Let's understand, understand that Hegelian dialectic, understand that Hegel was a Gnostic, understand that there is outside the left and right hand path, there is outside the, uh, the uh, so-called thesis antithesis because in many cases unless if an, thesis antithesis works when uh, when a person is within the question if you're outside the question you're not part of the question not part of the thesis, then it's no longer thesis antithesis because it doesn't include you. But if you, what you heard, primarily from the pastor, was a whole concept of agenda. Now, observing people is, is, is a, a, it brings in another another sort of uh, condition is that this person here is talking about the church, talking about his own definition of the church because. He himself doesn't recognize it. He's a, he's a Gnostic. This, these are people who do not understand that they are indeed Gnostic, because the Protestant Church itself is a Gnostic organization. 
just as the Roman Catholics were. So what happens is that you have Roman Catholicism. The Christian face of Gnostic paganism. Emerging about 1000 AD. Then from Roman Catholicism you had paganism. You had uh, Protestantism. The Protestants never separated themselves from the Gnostic traditions. They maintained them. It's, it's within the Gospels. It's within the, it's within the Bible. And you can sort of see them. So all of the, the domino- denominations, including the Evangelicals, emerged from this Gnostic understanding. And this is why you have the level of confusion that you have today, is that, 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 that there are people who don't recognize that they're in a, a, a place of of, of well, Gnostic paganism. They're not, they don't recognize that. They don't see this. The thing is, it, 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 it intertwines in their sense of what they want, the design. I mean, I see people who are using essential oils, right? They're essential oils. They understand that this is from pagan Gnosticism, but it has nothing to do with, you know, the, the physical understanding of the universe. And the same thing with the environment. The environment is a religion. And a large chunk of science. Well, I'm just going to make it home before uh, there's no more room on the card left for the uh, for filming. There's 28 minutes left. My ride is about 10, 15 minutes, so... Anyways, it is about 7 o'clock in the evening, so about uh, 19 hours into the day. Uh, I think it's August 8th. Uh, but the time has... the day has escaped my, my memory. And I haven't checked it, so couldn't be it. I'm gonna fix my mirror. So I'll pull it for a bit to fix the mirror. Make sure that it's in the right place. There we go. We're getting to a point in discussion now where things get a little complicated because there's no real direction left to go in. We've dealt with most of our topics to a, to, to a degree where we sort of head on. No. And that leaves you with no particular direction. And this is sort of what's taxing Lionel LeBron a little bit. Because he really doesn't know which direction to go next. They are threatening in New York another lockdown for the Lambda variant. But, uh, there's nothing left to say. I mean, people see that it's seasonal. Every spring and every fall. It doesn't follow the patterns of aircraft. It doesn't follow the patterns of where people travel. It follows the weather. So this means that the variants or whatever the whatever they're talking about in terms of the uh, sinus infection, because these are there are a number of variants that cause sinus infections, including 
COVID is simply one of them. Uh, these infections lead to either bronchitis or uh, and the point of death is pneumonia. So typically you would treat for pneumonia, not 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 uh, the sinus infection. Because that's your end point. Your end point is uh, can't see because of this tree here. There we go. doctors aren't doing this. The first thing they do in terms of dealing with the patient is they sedate and then intubate. As soon as they've done this, the patients are already dead. They don't survive. And you can see this. Where they have an intubated patient, they've treated it as bronchitis and pneumonia, the patient survived. Yet, the doctors aren't allowed to talk about this. There's a gag order. So the, 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 this, is no, this is not malpractice in terms of, oh, we didn't know what we were doing. This is murder. But no one seems to take this into account. And so there's nothing left to say. I mean, if, if, if the liberals are openly killing people, in other words, they're mur murdering them, how is this helping people? How, how, why is it the fault of the people who aren't vaccinated, who aren't actually actively killing anybody, why are they the cause of all the problems? Again, liberals will point this out because again they've heard this from their from their masters. They don't question their masters, and they simply repeat. They become parrots. They're simply repeating the things they've heard. And there's no discussion, well, with a person like that, a person who is a parrot, you have no discussion. There is no discussion with that person. You can talk about the weather and stuff like that, but otherwise, other than that, there's nothing really to talk about because they, they, they aren't a person that you can sort of have a conversation with. And the whole goal seems to be simply nothing more than creating divisions amongst people. Simply to create divisions. I know people who won't uh, deal with it. They, they tell uh, their friends, well, if you're not vaccinated, you can't come over anymore. In other words, they're not ditching their friends who aren't vaccinated. So much for the tolerant liberal. Well, he's being microaggressive. He's saying things that are that are attacking me. I feel unsafe. I need to hit back. This is the microaggression of liberals. Because you say something. They feel threatened no matter what it is you say, and now they have the right to hit you back because you've attacked them. Like it doesn't have to be you're actually attacking, they just, it's the 
perception of the attack. And the thing is, that they, they, they say, oh, we're not religious. Yes, you are. As long as you follow... Religion does not have to be something that is spiritual. Religion is the dictate. Religion is and are the, di the dictates or the dictates that you follow. Any dictates that you follow, political or otherwise, or religious, uh, theological or otherwise, is religion. So if you're following a political dictate rigorously, recording people who are hugging aggressively, and I've seen this, then you are religious. And you see the religious fanaticism popping up all over the place, regardless of whether it's actually actually theological or not. So this is where we go back at the Gnosis now and say this is no longer an issue of, of politics, but rather an issue of religion. And we're talking about the issue of religion in terms of religious behavior. Even atheism is now part of theology. Because it's a religion that is without God. And it creates itself as the master. The problem is man is not the master. And every time man is de demonstrated not to be the master, this is with quantum physics, you see an element of mythology in, a, in acts of uh, denial of reality. Mythology is great. And the thing is,